so I want to talk to you about uh, expected values and one of the things I love uh, to motivate this topic before you kind of just jump into some uh, fancy formula that will calculate it is uh, this quote from Albert Einstein uh, basically he says you cannot beat a roulette table unless you steal money from it and I'd just like to add or unless you're the owner of the table the idea of gambling in as an industry works because of expected values being in their favor. So we're going to play this game and we'll figure out, you know, why is that true? Why is the casino going to make money when they get people to play roulette? And so we're going to play a very simplistic uh, version. We're going to be um, betting simply on that the color red appears. And so if you've never played before, this little ball uh, spins around a big circular disc and it lands into one of these uh, 38 slots if you're playing with the uh, American style. Uh, roulette wheel. And that just means that there are 18 red and 18 black numbered 1 through 36. You can kind of see the 1 and the black and the reds are alternating. Not all odds, not all evens. Um, and then there's also two green slots, uh, a zero slot and a double zero slot. Okay, so here's the, the details we have of the game is that there are uh, 18 red, 18 black, two green slots. And if the roulette table is fair, the uh, slots all have an equal chance to occur. And the casinos, it's in their best interest to make sure that these are games are fair so that the model actually works time and time and time again. Uh, it, if you're playing against an unfair wheel, obviously there's going to be some different probabilities associated with this. So we're going to assume that each one of the slots are all equal likely to occur. So we want to see what happens as we play this game uh, a large number of times. So we're going to bet uh, $1 on red. And what happens is that if we win, the casino pays us $1. And we can pull our poker chip back. We also get... our dollar back. Now if we lose then the casino collects our one dollar. So it'd be nice if we could win every time but as you know that's not the way life works. So we're gonna play this um, I'm going to do this on purpose. We're going to say we're going to play 38 times and we're going to look at theoretically what would happen based on this uh, expectation of equal likely. So here's where we're kind of diverging here from what you would normally do to solve an expected value question. I'm going to say, you know, let's play the game 38 times. And again, we're kind of thinking of theoretical outcome. The theoretical outcome is if each slot is equal likely and I play 38, slot, 38 times, then the ball landed in every one of those 38 slots. And so here's what the results are. Is that out of the 38 times, 18 would land on red. And for us, that means, yay, we win. The other 20 times, 18 are black two green, so we have 20 times that we're going to lose. So obviously that means the casino is going to take our dollar. So what happened after the 38 plays? Well after the 38 plays we have uh, 18 times where we won a dollar. So we put a dollar on the table, 18 of those times the casino gave us back uh, a dollar, and then we could also pull back the original dollar bet. The other 20 times where we lost, we lost that dollar that was on the table. Red didn't appear, they pulled our chip away, and now to play again we have to put another dollar onto the table. So in the end, if I add these two up, 
my 18 plus a negative 20, I'm down $2 after 38 games. So this is why the casino is going to make money in the long run, because this idea of, you know, if those outcomes are all equal likely, every 38 plays, theoretically, I've lost $2. Now what expected value is a way to translate to an average for a single trial. So in this case, if I lay down my dollar, on average, what am I winning per game? So the average per game winning, in this case is negative, means we lost money, is my negative 2 over 38. And if you put that into your calculator, the outcome is roughly negative uh, 0.05, and just go two places, two more places here, two six. So we lose roughly a nickel a game when we're betting a dollar on red. So how do we do this with the expected value notation? So the definition of expected value. Uh, looks kind of messy and depending on you know what level you're taking this course in uh, you may look at it with summation notation in like a college algebra course um, where the prerequisite is or you may just learn that it's you know every outcome weighted by its probability so I'm gonna write it out uh, in a general term so in general terms what we have is that the expected value is found by taking each outcome in an experiment and multiplying it by the probability of that outcome and then adding these totals together and what it represents is the average outcome of an experiment over a large number of trials like for my roulette example the average outcome of a betting a dollar on red we saw is that I'm losing roughly a nickel a game I'll never lose a nickel when I put a dollar on red either I win a dollar or I lose a dollar but what it says is if I play it a large number of times on average I lost a nickel per game and because there's random variation, you may be close to a nickel after a large number of trials, but it doesn't have to be exactly that negative uh, 0.0526 or that negative 238s when you average out your winnings, because a large number of trials is kind of one of those vague phrases. For those that are, are taking it at a higher level, uh, we have a more formula definition, uh, and in this case, some students may not know what some of these symbols represents, but it says it's the sum from n equals to uh, 1 to k, where k is the number of outcomes, of x of n times the probability of x of n. And it's doing the same thing here. It says it takes the outcome of the experiment times its probability, and then the sigma symbol says me sum up all the different possibilities where this occurs. So the, these are the outcomes of the experiment. There's k outcomes. Okay. So we're going to look at this uh, same example now, but we're going to use the definition to calculate the expected value rather than kind of using the idea like we did in a roulette earlier. So when I want the expected value, I have to kind of list out what are the outcomes and what are their probabilities. So I'm betting a dollar on red, so either I, I lose my dollar or I win a dollar. And what we saw with the probability of losing is that red does not occur 20 out of the 38 times red occurs 18 out of 38 times. So this little table is nice because it does what this formula has for what the expected value is. So the expected value of betting a dollar on red based on the definition says take each outcome and multiply it by its probability and add this total together. So negative 1, I lost my dollar with the probability 20 by 38. The next outcome is, well, I won a dollar. Its probability was 18 by 38. And so the expected value of this experiment, well, I multiply by negative 1, multiply this by positive 1. I have negative 20 38 plus 18 38. We already have our common denominator, so I know this is negative 2 by 38. The same thing we got by theoretically playing the game 38 times and taking our average winning. 
So my expected value is still roughly 0 0.0526. And that was the same calculation that we did up here. So I hope this helps you understand the idea of what the expected value is and how to calculate them based on an experiment.